Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our opening hymn, 457, Jesus Christ is risen today. Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if, but if we, we confess, confess our, our sins, sins God, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive, forgive our, our sins, sins and, and cleanse, cleanse us from, us from all, all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, God, we confess, we confess that, that we are by nature sinful and unclean. unclean. We have we sinned have against, against you in thought, word, and deed, and deed by what, what we have done and, and by what, what we have left undone. undone. We, have we have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not, not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For our intro at this morning, I just want to introduce, before we sing this responsively, where this is from. As you know, usually the intro is from the psalmody. Today it's different on Easter Sunday. It comes from the book of Exodus, and it is a song of rejoicing. It's sometimes called the Song of Moses. It was recorded shortly after they passed through the Red Sea. And if you remember, Pharaoh and his armies pursued them right into the water where the waters crashed in and drowned Pharaoh and his army. And that image that's recorded in this song is an image of God overcoming those who seek to destroy his people. God overcoming the evil one who's personified in the Pharaoh. I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The horse and his rider is the Pharaoh who really is death and the devil pursuing the people of God and God rescues them. Even as in our Lord's resurrection that we celebrate today, he has rescued us. We'll sing the intro it responsively. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established, the Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray the collect for this Easter day. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now hear the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. And again, you shall adorn yourself with tambourines, and shall go forth in the dance of merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Arise! And let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we sing the gradual verses. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, 
Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. We'll continue with the children's message. Well, today is that most special day of the whole year of the church where we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Jesus, who was dead, becoming alive again forever. And I want to show you some things that happened in these last few days that we remember this day. If you remember just a couple days ago, it was Good Friday, and they had arrested Jesus. They had taken him to trial before Pilate, who was almost like a king. And Pilate had the power to put prisoners to death or to set them free. And Jesus' enemies said, no, Pilate, don't let him go. We want him put to death. Crucify him. And the crowd all called out, Crucify him, crucify him. And they they put a crown of thorns on Jesus. And you can see Pilate over here. You can see the soldiers, the Roman soldiers standing around. And Jesus stood there for our sake. And he suffered all those insults and a crown of thorns on his head. And they took him and they whipped him. And the next day, they took him outside the city and they nailed him to a cross. That's the day we call Good Friday. It was good for us because it was for our forgiveness. He died for us so that we could live and be forgiven and one day go to heaven with him. You can see on that picture, they put Jesus on the cross and there were two other men. One was crucified on one side and one on the other. And so Jesus died on the cross that Good Friday. And one of these men believed in him and was also in heaven that same day. So now after Jesus died, all his disciples were really sad and they were crying about what had happened. And well, on Sunday morning early, some of the women who loved him and followed him went to the tomb. And when they got there, the stone to the tomb where they had buried Jesus had been rolled away by an angel. And the angel said to them, he is not here. He has risen, just as he said. You can see the angel talking to the women there. And then Jesus appeared to them, and he said, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And they were so surprised, I think they probably weren't sure what to think. But those words of comfort for them are for us too. In any time of life where maybe we feel scared about something, Jesus says, Don't be afraid. I'm with you, and I love you. And then later that day, the disciples came after they heard the reports of the women. And they went and looked in the tomb too. There's Peter and John. They ran to see what happened and they found he's not there. He has risen and he lives. So that's what we celebrate on Easter. Jesus is raised from the dead and lives forever. He is our God. He is our Savior. And with him, we never need to be afraid. Let us pray. Dear Lord, bless all our children and families. Help us never to be afraid because you are with us and for us. In your name we ask. Amen. We'll sing our hymn of the day. This morning it's 482, this joyful Easter tide.
and his peace and his mercy be unto you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen this day, Christ is risen. He is is risen risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. And Easter is personal. Just like Good Friday is personal for us, so also is Easter. Our sermon text from the Gospel lesson of St. Matthew. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. On Easter, this day, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And what we are celebrating really is his victory over death, an enemy that no human being had been able to conquer but Jesus Both God and man conquers it for us and forever. Death could not hold the Lord of life. He is too strong to be held by death. He overcame all the attacks and the fury of the evil one, who through fallen human beings taunted Jesus to the very last breath of his life. Come down from the cross, you who claim to be king of Israel, then we'll believe on you. Jesus overcomes those taunts and temptations. He remains there on the cross until death. So that when Jesus said, It is finished, our salvation had been won. So early Sunday morning, the women had walked to the tomb and they were filled with sorrows. They were reeling from the weekend's events. What horror they had witnessed at the cross. It must have seemed like an unthinkable nightmare to them. For only a few days ago, Jesus had been alive, teaching and eating with them. They had listened to his every word. It had filled them with hope and comfort for the future. But now, early Sunday morning, in the dawn, they walked together to his tomb. Their hopes dashed on the rocks of a Roman cross, a shameful death, and made more so by the rejection of the Jewish leaders, who took the time that day to come out from the city on Friday afternoon only to laugh and mock at Jesus as he died. The women, coming to the tomb so early in the morning, had been courageous enough to be present at the crucifixion. While the male disciples, other than John, had taken to hiding in the city out of fear. But even in 
Jesus' utmost humiliation upon the cross, being treated like scum and a sinner and a criminal, they were not ashamed to stand there and to obviously be identified with him as his followers. They stood with him near the foot of the cross, weeping, crying out to God in their anguish. And they had questions. And they had doubts. And they had fears. Yet at the foot of the cross, they still had Jesus. But early Sunday morning, as they go to the tomb, they didn't think they had Jesus anymore. He was dead. What would become now of his teachings? They wondered how in just the past few days things had gone so horribly wrong. But as horrible as the past few days had been, as heart-wrenching as Good Friday was, God was still in control and had just accomplished the salvation of many. As Jesus died, he had said, it is finished. And so it was. And the women would be the first to learn what Jesus had been doing by going to the cross for us. Their faith, their love, their courage would be rewarded. These women would be the first to hear the good news of Easter, proclaimed by an angel, a messenger from heaven. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. In the depths of their sorrow, they receive this good news, this amazing, great news of God's salvation. And just like Good Friday, the resurrection of Jesus is also an event that cannot be held at arm's length. It can't simply be studied from a distance as if it's just another event in history. Now, just like Good Friday, his resurrection is a real event. It's not merely some distant point in the past. It is the most important event of human history. Jesus was dead on Friday, but he is alive again. And that is personal for us, for you and for me. If it was for our sins that he was crucified, then in his resurrection, we see also what that death on the cross accomplished for us. We need not fear physical death because in Christ we shall live. He said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. This is personal for us. About a hundred years ago, there was a Norwegian Lutheran scholar by the name of Johann Ilvesacker. And Johann Ilvesacker wrote this wonderful single volume commentary. It's kind of a harmony of the Gospels where he kind of put them all together and comment on it. And he writes this about the resurrection. The resurrection is the Father's Amen to the words of the Son on the cross. It is finished. The blood of the sacrificial lamb was accepted by the Father as an efficacious atonement. Therefore, his resurrection is the judgment of acquittal for the world. His resurrection is a judgment of your acquittal, your forgiveness. In other words, we are all forgiven in Christ. Now, the personalness of Jesus' resurrection. It's true, I suspect, that many younger Christians, many that perhaps aren't that young in chronology, but perhaps in experience, have been sheltered from the personal nature of Jesus' resurrection. But at some point, you will find yourself contending with this. You will stand at the graveside of someone you love, an internment, as we call it. 
where a friend or a loved one is being laid to rest in the ground. And everybody gathers around. There's usually a little tent and there's probably 15 chairs for the immediate family. And most of you know what that's like, but some of you don't. There at an internment, you'll see how personal Jesus' resurrection is for you. And as time passes, and it does, in turn, our loved ones will know how personal it is when they gather to stand at each of our internments. Jesus' resurrection matters. It means everything. It's not only for him. It's for each of us. Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified, says the angel. He's not here, for he has risen as he said. And then the angel takes them to the tomb itself. Come, see the place where he lay, and then go quickly. Tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. See, I have told you, says the angel. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. They ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. It's always seemed to me like that must be the most impossible thing to translate, what that was like to actually be greeted. <laughs> Easter morning by the risen Lord. And that's really what it says. It's simply, in Greek, the basic form of greeting that we find. And yet, how profound that was that morning. Greetings. They came up. They took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. There it is again. The angel had said to them, do not be afraid. So also our Lord tells us the same thing. Go, tell my brothers. And notice what he calls them. Tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The angel had referred to them as his disciples, and rightly so. But Jesus uses a more close term, my brothers. Here they were, men who had run away from him in the garden, or like Peter, had outright denied even knowing him, and they're hiding. They're not the ones coming to the tomb in the morning. They're hiding. My brothers, he calls them. He forgives them for their failures and cowardice. He will send them to all nations to proclaim his resurrection, the good news of Christ our Savior. But that's significant. My brothers. Martin Luther writes about this. He says, if now Christ is our brother, I should like to know what we still lack. Brethren in the flesh have common possessions. Have together one father, one inheritance. Otherwise, they would not be brethren. So, we have common possessions with Christ and have together one father and one inheritance, which does not grow less when divided. But whoever has one part of the spiritual inheritance has it all. That's what it means for Christ to call you his brother or his sister. The resurrection is personal because now the Son of God, risen from the dead, who lives to all eternity, calls us his friends, his brothers, his sisters. Do not be afraid, for death is defeated. The Lord is risen, and we too shall rise. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess the Christian faith with the Nicene Creed. I believe, I believe in, in one, one God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We rejoice on this day at the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray for your church throughout the world. Lord, let your word and the good news of resurrection and life go forth to the comfort and strengthening of many. We pray your blessing for all congregations such as our own who are unable to meet together this day, that you would bring healing to those who are sick, wisdom to those who are researching treatments and vaccines, and strength to all who serve in health care and your protection upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need of the healing hand of our Heavenly Father, remembering Zach, Olivia, Carol and Renee, Jesse and Logan, Andrew and Sharon, Garth, Bill, Daryl and Josephine, Marion and John, Val and Mark, Connie and Pat, Glenn and Cindy. And here we add names which are known to us of those who are in need of our Lord's healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pay, pray for Mackenzie Schroeder, who is near death. O oh Lord, we ask that you would bless and take her unto yourself, forgive her all her sins, and strengthen and comfort those who will mourn her passing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Josh and Anissa and all our health care workers here at Grace that they would be strengthened in this difficult time of service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who hold elected offices, who are guiding our nation through this difficult time, that you would give them wisdom as they serve for the good of our country. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Help us, Heavenly Father, to celebrate this Easter with joy. For you are our Lord who sent your Son, who is raised from the dead, who is now our brother and friend. Comfort us in all times of trial. Be with those and strengthen those whose work has been affected and provide for all their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we pray the prayer which he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And in the joy of the resurrection, we sing, Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and
Let us pray. O God, for our redemption, you gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of the enemy. Grant that all our sin may be drowned through daily repentance, and that day by day we may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, just a couple of announcements before our recessional hymn. And one is that if you've been watching the news, as probably everybody has, you know that really through the end of April, we all have kind of a stay-at-home uh, orders. And um, everybody working together for the good of our neighbors uh, makes a lot of sense. So we're planning to keep our services on video through the end of the month. And as we get closer to that, we'll reassess the situation. But I want to thank all of you for your faithfulness in remembering grace with offerings and prayers and that we continue to walk together in Christ. Also, I want to encourage you, if you're logging onto YouTube to watch these videos, um, also subscribe to that because we're almost to where we'll have our own YouTube channel, but we need 100 subscribers and we have about 70. So if you haven't done that yet, please do that. Uh, just click that subscribe box when you're logged into YouTube and after we hit 100, we have our own dedicated YouTube channel. So I would appreciate if you could do that. Now I want to say just a word about our recessional hymn. Um, you may be aware the Missouri Synod was a group of Saxon German immigrants who came over here seeking freedom to practice their Lutheran faith. And one of those early pastors, C.F.W. Walther, wrote this hymn we're about to sing. He's risen, he's risen, number 480. Of course, it started out in German, and um, it's been translated to English for us. But the joy, the joy that he had in that hymn that was shared by those early Lutheran immigrants is still ours today. So we rejoice together with those who've gone before us in the faith, and we today who are called by our Lord to receive this gift and to be faithful to him, our risen Savior. Hymn 480.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.